Do you love working out? I bet most of you have included this in our daily routines especially during this quarantine period. This 2014 wellness dance co-sponsored by a known food manufacturer promotes the importance of a well-balanced meal and proper exercise for a healthy body. In fact, our body needs the right nutrients and enough oxygen to function well. This is connected to the mechanism of our circulatory system. Let us find out more about this organ system right here on Science at Home. Hi everyone, welcome back to Science at Home and for today we'll be having our discussion of another human organ system and that is the circulatory system. Now the circulatory system is the one responsible for the transporting of materials to the different parts of the body. Now what are these materials by the way? So this includes number one, the nutrients which also came from the food that we eat. Number two, the gases from which we inhale and exhale. So these are the oxygen and carbon dioxide. And number three, we have the metabolic waste. When we say metabolic waste, these are the excess products of, from the different body functions. So best example of this is the urine, which includes the excess water and salt. Now, within the circulatory system, this involves three different major organs. So what are these organs, by the way? So the first one is the blood, or is considered as a circulating fluid in which it carries the different materials. Number two, we have the heart or the pumping organ or the pumping muscle that pumps the blood to the different parts of the body. And number three, we have the blood vessels which carries the blood to the different parts of the body. Now, let's try to begin first with the heart. Now, the heart, as you can see in this diagram, is denoted in blue and red colors. So last time, as you, as you can recall, uh, there are two types of blood which are the deoxygenated blood or the oxygen poor blood and the oxygenated blood or the oxygen rich blood which is denoted by the blue and red colors respectively. So the different parts of the heart are denoted by the blue and red colors in which it denotes what type of blood it carries. So either a deoxygenated blood or an oxygenated blood. So let's try to begin first on exploring the different parts of the heart one by one. Now. Let's first start with the different chambers. As you all know, the human heart has four chambers, but there are two major chambers in the heart itself. So we have the first one, we have the atrium or the auricle or the receiving chambers simply because that they are the one that receives the blood that enters the heart. So we have two types of atrium. So we have the right atrium. So the right atrium is the one that receives the oxygenated blood that enters the heart, which comes from the different parts of the body. Meanwhile, the left atrium is the one that receives the blood, oxygenated blood in particular, that comes from the lungs. On the other hand, we have the ventricles or the pumping chambers in which they are the one that pumps the blood to the different parts of the body. So we have the right ventricle which pumps the deoxygenated blood coming from the right atrium and we have the left ventricle which pumps the oxygenated blood to the different parts of the body. Now, as you can see right here, Based on the diagram, the ventricles have a thicker muscle wall as compared to the atrium simply because in order for them to perform the pumping functions of the heart. Okay, so after the heart or after the four chambers of the heart, so we have here the vena cava. So the vena cava is considered as the largest vein in the body in which this is the blood vessel that brings blood into the heart. So we have two types of vena cava depending on its location. So the first one is the superior vena cava in which this brings the deoxygenated blood coming from the upper parts of the body and we have the inferior vena cava which brings the blood from the lower parts of the body okay next we have the pulmonary vein and the pulmonary artery so as you can see right here so they have the terms pulmonary so what does the term pulmonary means so pulmonary has something to do with the lungs okay so Meaning, the pulmonary artery is the one that brings the oxygenated blood, so since it is colored blue, from the heart to the lungs. 
Meanwhile, the pulmonary vein is the one that brings the blood coming from the heart, so oxygenated this time, from the lungs going back to the heart. And lastly, we have the aorta, or consider the aorta is considered as the largest artery in the body in which this brings the blood to the different parts from the heart to the different parts of the body. Now, as you can see, at the centermost part, so we have the septum. The septum is considered as the muscular wall that prevents the mixing of the blood within the left side and the right side. It's because that the right side of the heart contains the deoxygenated blood or the oxygen-poor blood. Meanwhile, the left side brings the oxygenated or the oxygen-rich blood. So in order for to prevent the mixing of the blood. Now, how does the blood travel to the different parts of the body? So this is the general pathway of the blood to the different parts of the body. So let it begins first with the superior and the inferior vena cava. So it carries the oxygenated blood coming from the different parts of the body. So meaning this is an oxygen poor blood as denoted by the color blue. Then it enters through the right atrium. Then it is being pumped by the right ventricle. Then after the right ventricle, it is pumped through the pulmonary artery. Now, within the pulmonary artery, as we mentioned a while ago, the term pulmonary meaning leading to the lungs. So, from the pulmonary artery, it will now go to the lungs. So, within the lungs, as we mentioned last time, within our discussion of the respiratory system, that is the time that the exchange of gases between oxygen and carbon dioxide will take place. So what will happen is that the deoxygenated blood, as you can recall, will be uh, exchanging gases. So from co carbon dioxide, it will, enter, uh, it will exit the blood and the oxygen will enter through the bloodstream. So what happens is that the deoxygenated blood will then become the oxygenated blood, symbolized by the color red. So from the lungs, it will now go to the pulmonary vein leading to the heart once again as it enters through the left atrium. Then from the left atrium, it will now pass down to the left ventricle and the left ventricle will then pump the, the, the oxygenated blood rather to the aorta and the aorta will bring the oxygenated blood or the oxygen-rich blood to the different parts of the body. Now, what happens is that the body cells or the cells of the different body parts contains capillaries as well in which there will also be exchange of nutrients and gases or the exchange of materials. So what happens is that as it carries oxygenated blood, the oxygen will then be used by the different body cells to perform different body functions. And as a return, it will produce a metabolic waste which includes excess water and carbon dioxide, which then the oxygenated blood will then become an oxygen poor blood which will then return as an deoxygenated blood and the cycle will return once again. Now, that's all within the general pathway of the blood but this time let us go to the different blood vessels. Now, the blood vessels as we mentioned a while ago, so this is the one that carries the blood to the different parts of the body. Now, there are three types of uh, blood vessels depending on their location and what type of blood it carries. So as you can see, it is still denoted by a red and blue color. So meaning it is different in terms of the type of blood it carries. So the first one, we have the artery. So the artery, as you all know, is denoted by the color red. So meaning it carries oxygenated blood. And it brings blood away from the heart, from the heart to the different parts of the body. So the clue right here is that artery starts with the letter A. It's A means away from the heart. Then what happens is that Another type of blood vessel is the vein, or as the blue color indicates, meaning it is A, deoxygenate, it carries deoxygenated blood from the different body parts inside or towards the heart. Okay? Then as you can see, between an artery and a vein are very small or smaller blood vessels, okay, which leads to the capillaries. Now, the capillaries, okay, as you can see, I indicated it using the violet color, meaning it's the place where this exchange of materials takes place. So, it can be either the nutrients or even the gases, okay? So, uh, as this distinction, you can see right here, as this is a microscopic view of the blood vessels. So, this one uh, is the artery, which contains a thicker wall. Meanwhile, the vein has a uh, less thick wall. 
Okay, what is the reason for this? Okay, it's because the artery is the one that carries blood coming from the heart. So therefore, it must have a thicker wall in order to withstand the pressure of the blood coming out from the heart. Okay? Now, this time, let's go to the blood itself or the circulating fluid. Now, as you can see right here, the blood is composed of two different parts. We have the liquid part and the solid part. Now, majority, the blood itself is a suspension or it's a type of mixture in which it has different size of particles dissolved in it. But not necessarily dissolved, but rather somewhat not uniformly distributed on it. So let's begin first with the liquid portion or what we call the plasma. So if we will try to separate, later I will show you the different components of the blood when it is separated. So the plasma is also known as the pale yellow fluid in which most of the blood cells are suspended. Okay, then the remaining parts of it are the blood cells itself. So there are three types of blood cells. So first we have the red blood cells or the erythrocytes, erythro meaning red. Okay, so red blood cells due to the substance or the uh, compound called hemoglobin. Now the hemoglobin produces or gives the red color to the blood. Okay, then the Erythrocytes, as you can see right here, or the red blood cells is the one that carries oxygen and nutrients to the different parts of the body. As you can see right here, red blood cells doesn't have a nucleus or they are unnucleated. Why they are so unnucleated? Simply because that in order for the red blood cells to carry more materials to the different parts of the body. Okay, then afterwards, we have the leukocytes, leuco meaning colorless or the white blood cells. So, the white blood cells is the one responsible for fighting infections against uh, foreign bodies that enters the blood. Okay? And lastly, we have the platelets or the thrombocytes. So this is the one responsible for the blood clotting or the one that helps when there is a wound or somewhat a uh, infection or to prevent other scars, uh, to prevent the outflow of blood itself. Okay. So, as I mentioned a while ago, so here it is. So, the plasma, as you can see, is composed primarily of around 55% of the blood volume. Then, the remaining 45% is around for red blood cells and only a little percentage for the combined white blood cells and platelets. Okay. Now, let us now go first on the different types of blood circulation. So we have two types of blood circulations, namely the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Now, the pulmonary circulation involves the heart and the lungs in which it is the one responsible for the exchange of gases. Meanwhile, the systemic circulation is the one responsible or is between the heart and the different body parts, which is responsible for the distribution of the materials such as oxygen and nutrients. So a while ago, we have discussed already the general pattern way of the blood in the heart and to the different parts of the body. Now, a special type of circulation is what we call the coronary circulation. Now, the coronary circulation is the one that provides the nutrients or the nourishment to the heart muscle itself. Okay? So, as you can see right here, this is how the blood flows inside the heart. So, let us first try to explore what happens within the uh, blood entering the heart. So we have this, what we call the cardiac cycle. So the cardiac cycle has something to do with the contraction or the series of contraction and relaxation of the heart itself. So it has two phases. So we have the systole or the contraction or the pumping phase and the diastole or the relaxation or the filling phase. So the diastole and the systole or the systole and the diastole compre uh, is the one that attributes to the blood pressure. So the normal blood pressure in humans is 120 over 80. Okay. Then lastly, we have the valves. So what is the, pro the, uh, the purpose of the valves? Is in order to prevent the backflow of the blood in the heart. So there are two types of uh, valves, primarily based on their location. So we have the atrioventricular. So from the word itself, atrioventricular meaning between the atrium and the ventricles. So it has two types. So the tricuspid valve is the one that divides the right and the right atrium and the right ventricle. Meanwhile, the mitral or the bicuspid valve is the one that divides the left atrium and the left ventricle. Then lastly, we have the semilunar valves, which controls the um, the flow of blood of blood between the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. So within the pulmonary valve, so or the pulmonary semilunar valve is in the pulmonary artery. 
And the aortic semilunar is in the aorta itself. Okay, so that concludes our episode for today. This is Sir Dave saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye!